All right, today what I wanted to discuss is we're gonna go over a sticky clutch pedal. You may be having your clutch pedal not fully come all the way back up, or you may be revving it up to four or five grand and it sticks for some reason before it actually grabs the clutch. And what that issue is, is the slave cylinder. So I wanted to go ahead and do this video on how to go ahead and install the slave cylinder, also how to bleed it and bleed the system properly to give you back that stiff clutch feeling that you originally once had. Now that we got the hood popped open, first things first is we're gonna take the cover off that covers the slave cylinder, which is the clutch fluid reservoir by the master cylinder for the brake, uh, brake fluid. Thing is, if, if you're in America, to keep it looking symmetrical, you have to order that cover from Japan. Um, for some reason, American G35s, 350Zs did not come with a cover. So let's go ahead and remove the cover. It's fairly easy to remove. As you can see here, right here would be your brake reservoir and then your clutch ones right here. So then this comes up, which I already went ahead and pulled the, uh, the rivet pops out, which come out to hold it in. So as you can tell here, so this uh, should be changed pretty uh, regularly. This one, I actually put a stainless steel line in to try to help with the heat for, cause it's an external slave cylinder. Unlike in the G37 or 370Z, their slave cylinder you're gonna see is internal. It's actually in the bell housing uh, for the assembly. This one's external, so it's exposed to the elements and heat. So this fluid kind of heats up pretty quickly, even though, let's take a look at my fluid here. I mean, that's 20,000 miles on that fluid, and I have yet to change it. So as you can see, this fluid, fluid is pretty black after about 20,000 miles. So when I go ahead and uh, flush out this, uh, the clutch fluid, I go ahead and just change the slave at the same time. So when I use uh, the fluid that I'm gonna be using to change it with is the GTR.4 brake fluid. There's actually a TSB out, a technical service bulletin by Nissan where these the slave cylinders are failing early they actually recommend using the gtr brake fluid in it so i have some left over from my last change so i'm going to go ahead and uh get started with that as you could tell this definitely needs changed i'm about to go to california make a little road trip from arizona and when doing that i don't want to worry about the slave going out and when the slave goes out what will happen is you press the pedal to the floor and it won't come back up that's when it completely goes out first it's just sticking and that can be dangerous because say you're in the middle where you need to accelerate and drop it a gear and you go to drop it a gear and your pedal sticks to the floor and you can't get in any gear. That's a serious problem. So for, you know, 38 bucks from O'Reilly's with a lifetime warranty, I'm just going to go ahead and get started on this, exchange it in and get this thing changed. Okay, as you can see, here is um, CD009 transmission. Um, right here is the actual slave. So when you depress the pedal, this actually pushes the fork so these plates come apart so right now i'm going to go ahead and we're going to drain the fluid so if you're just bleeding it you don't want to drain the reservoir all the way out welds all the air in it so just drain it slowly as you watch the reservoir come down which i'll show you how to do that after i install this because i'm not bleeding it right now but i'm going to use this little bleeder thing because i don't want to make a mess so let's go ahead and do that so pull this cap off right here and it's going to be a size eight so what we're gonna do so well if we can get it to get on there okay crack it to the left a little bit Whoop. oh really Okay, there we go. Okay, didn't know if it was the right hose size or not. So, we're using gravity feds the best, so we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew this a little bit. Let this all drain out.
So, as you can see, we drained out the clutch reservoir, and this fluid should be clear. Um, it's just brake fluid. But if we look down in here, every 20,000 miles or so, this is why I change this, because I keep getting this black residue stuff. See it? And I don't know what it is. But I don't have any issues, that's why I go ahead and change out the slave about every 20,000. Uh, I know it lasts longer. It can go. It can usually go about 50. Um, but I once it starts, to, I start to see this get dark. That's when I go ahead and just change it out. So flush will help this. But since you're already going through the effort of doing this, I just change the slave since it's such a very um, free part. So here's uh, the slave cylinder. Once you get it, it comes in a package like this. Right there's the slave, and there's the boot. So what we're going to do with this is you take this, this little piston rod will go through here, it'll be with this rivet side up, this side here, and go ahead and press it through, just like that. And we'll take this, and we'll put this over it. Just like that. What I like to do is I take a little, um, this is it put together. Then I take a little piece of zip tie and I zip tie this boot right here just to ensure that it doesn't come loose. Because once that comes loose, then this will definitely fail. So the slave doesn't come with a zip tie. I just like using a zip tie here to ensure that this dust boot does not come off. Okay, need a 12 millimeter wrench to start out with. We're gonna go ahead and loosen these up. I don't want to get that line all fucking wet. So let's get that out of the way. Huh. It's actually kind of warm. I should have waited maybe. Oh, too late now. Now you can see, here's the old slave. Where I obviously put tape and the zip tie on it from before. No issues. So let's go ahead and install this new one. As you can see here, we've got the new slave cylinder installed. Um, a good a good rule of thumb is my bell housing is still hot. Is when it's hot, you just finger tight these in these bolts. The the torque on them is 17 foot pounds, which isn't really a lot at all. And if it's hot, it's easier to strip the thread. So I'm uh, I'll wait till tomorrow to actually like kind of torque these down. But for right now, I'm just gonna finger tighten these up. And as you can see here, I got, uh, right here, I put in a stainless steel line which runs up the side of this uh, instead of the rubber hose. And I did that for different various reasons. Um, I also took uh, some heat tape and wrapped around the pipe or the um, stainless steel line. So any heat down here isn't baking the uh, clutch fluid, which is brake fluid coming down to the slave cylinder right here. So now that we have it installed, uh, you're going to have to have another person help you depress the clutch pedal to pump it up and build pressure in the line. Once there's a, and then I'll go over the sequence to go ahead and how you would do that next. Okay, now we're going to fill up the uh, reservoir here with some GTR brake fluid like it's re called for. So the key is when you're filling this up, to even though we're going to bleed the system, we still don't want to get air bubbles in it. So you're going to want to pour this fluid in as slowly as possible.
Okay, so part of bleeding the slave cylinder, what you need to do is you have somebody up there depress the clutch pedal. Now, they're going to have this bleeder, you're going to have the bleeder hose completely to the right cracked, closed. You don't want it open. And you have that person depress the pedal until they build pressure in it. And once there's pressure in it, you have them hold it all the way to the floor, and then you're going to turn this to the left, and you see air bubbles that come out. And while they have the pedal held to the floor, then you crack this back to the right and tighten it, and then you repeat the process until you see no more air bubbles at all. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So Jessica, go ahead and start depressing that pedal. As you can, you can see, see it's starting to move the slave cylinder, which is moving the fork back and forth. So whenever you press the clutch, this is what moves. So you can actually change gears. And see how this is an external slave cylinder. It's not actually in the bell housing, it's outside. All right, you want to go ahead and hold it to the floor? Holding. Okay, see how she has it held to the floor? We're going to turn this to the left, and there should be some air bubbles that come out. See all those air bubbles? And then you're going to crack it back to the right and repeat the process. All right, go ahead and start pumping it. Starting. See how she slowly pumps the pedal? This thing, uh, the slave cylinder gains pressure and the hydraulic system to be able to push this fulcrum for this lever. As you can see, it's starting to move. All right, you want to hold it to the floor? Holding. All right, crack this to the left. And then this came off of the... All right, and crack it to the right. Okay, go ahead and let go of the pedal. Let go. All right, you can give it a break for a second if you want. Okay. All right, go ahead. Starting. How's that pedal feel? Pretty firm? Oh yeah, there's a lot of pressure though. It's popping right back. Alright, how you doing? Okay. Holding? This should be the final crack. Keep it held. Keep it held. All right, let go. Released. All right, this one should probably be the final bleed. So now as you're gonna be able to see, there should be no air bubbles in this tube when she has the pedal held all the way to the floor. And that means the system's completely bled. So that's what you'd be doing when you bleed this. All right, you want to hold the pedal to the floor? Holding. I don't know if I can get this where you guys will be able to see it or not. All right, let go. And as you can see, there's, this fluid is completely clear. See, there's no bubbles in it at all. That means the system has been completely bled properly. Take a look. See? All right, you're good to go. You can leave.
Okay, as you can see, fluid has been completely changed out. Look how crystal clear it is. That's how it should look. So we'll go ahead and put the cap back on this. Alright, here's the book. As you can see, there's my entry at 161000 for the new slave. If we go up, you can see at 141 is when I put in a new slave. So it's been about roughly 20,000 miles until it starts to turn black. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully this helps you uh, with doing maintenance for your slave cylinder when you need to change and bleed. Uh, change the slave or to bleed the system. If your fluid is also black, it's a good idea. And I'll uh, see you next video. That's violent. Well, motor dying. She don't want to play.